So in our class, I had everyone do their numerology based on their birth numbers. So that is the month, the day, and the year added up. And that uh, is what I want to take a look at right now. And birth numbers are really important because they will help us align with our life purpose. So far, I had you look at your astrology so that you could see the positive and negative traits that you may have in your life or that you may operate from. And that understanding is going to allow you to know that those are planetary influences that are actually in play. They're not exactly you or something that you yourself have created. So when our planetary influences come into play in our life, we're able to understand that this is planetary. This has to do with the consciousness of not just me, but everyone else that you know is operating from those same planetary astrological influences. Now we're moving into the numerology and taking a look at that. Each one of these things we're looking at is to help us know ourselves better and also the influences that are operating so that we can actually add to or use these uh, influences in our life for manifestation. So I had you do your numerology and you would have come up with um, three numbers. So like uh, it would have your two numbers added up and then a slash and then those two numbers added up would be on the other side of the slash representing um, your birth numbers. So um, taking a look at the ones that we have, um, the birth number or the primary number, which is the one digit at the end that I had you uh, do, represents a lot of uh, special qualities that align us to our purpose. So I wanted to go over that, the energies and the issues of each of these primary numbers. So those that have a one as their primary number, um, it is creativity and confidence. Two is cooperation and balance. Three is expression and sensitivity. Four is stability and process. Five is freedom and discipline. Six is vision and acceptance. Seven is trust and openness. Eight is abundance and power. Nine is integrity and wisdom. And zero are inner gifts. So if you had an 11, cooperation and balance would be in play, but so would creativity and confidence. Okay, so you could take the double digit and turn it into one, but also include two of those uh, numbers, the number one creativity and confidence and cooperation and balance. If you're a 10, then you would also include creativity and confidence and also inner gifts. Okay, so inner gifts, that would also be um, part of a 10. And then if you, one plus zero is one. So that would represent creativity and confidence. Those that have a 12, they would represent the three, expression of and sensitivity, as well as creativity and confidence, and number two, cooperation and balance. So when you already have the, the single digits, then they would represent what I spoke of. But those that have uh, the 12s or the 10s or the 11s would represent all three of those. Things. So these are uh, considered our birth numbers and they will represent issues and potentials that we have um, because of that date that we were born on. 
So there are different universal talents that we can access. No, um, there's also things that may be tension or drive fear into our life. Those could be negative um, attributes. So let's take a look a little further and understand that once we discover our path and we dedicate ourselves to it by aligning to it and understanding that these influences are in play for some reason, uh, we can have a really awesome experience with the wisdom that is around us. So beginning on this walk as a mystic, it is important to understand and know yourself so that you can communicate with spirit and work with that. And we are going to be going through different processes. So starting with the numerology, um, let's take a look at the number ones. So the number ones manifest their creativity and confidence. And that is really important for them to tap into their creativity that creativity is a part of their psychic operations we also have the number twos and the number twos are um they become balanced diplomats and they begin to um, work with untamed energy and are able to hone it into the cone of power that they're focusing on. And so they can become, um, they should work into, work with um, talents and careers that do have to put things into place or into balance. That's including people, their minds, um, a type of organization that's really important. Um, the threes are to uplift with their expression and sensitivity. So they are communicators. Um, so they are also able to recognize what is truly being said or what is what should be said. Um, so they are really good at reading between the lines and expressing things to do help and to get it back to that aligned state. Fours master the step-by-step -step process to reach their goals. So fours are really good at blueprinting and putting things together and, and checking on where it's headed and how they like it. Um, fives find their inner freedom through discipline. And so a lot of their life is about putting discipline into place and responsibility, but also finding the sacredness and the magic that is in that. Um, so it is part of finding their freedom because that the things that they are disciplining is uh, opening up space for them. Sixes, they see a bigger picture and accept the innate perfection of the world. So they want the future. They want to transform the way things are right now so that the future is a better place. So their talents have to do with a lot of times lining people and situations up uh, into a foundation so that they can move forward uh, swiftly. So they are clairvoyant and they're able to see where things are headed. They may have a little bit of remote viewing within them. The sevens open up to a point of faith in themselves and others. So sevens are meant to communicate and be part of community as well as creating their own spiritual community. So they're really good for facilitating uh, healing and any type of group work that is important. Um, it's also finding faith in what works for them, what it is, how they're connecting. So there's a real science behind that. Eights achieve and use abundance and power for higher purpose. So eight people, um, they like to feel that they are processing and working with higher powers to co-create with the universe and, and make this place a better place. Um, they 
also use their power by having control in their life and not falling or letting themselves fall under the flow or the current that is happening. Nines lead by their inspiring example of integrity and higher wisdom. So nine people are also, um, they have abilities to know things and where things are headed and they can inspire people and give people knowledge. So this type of work, I be going into being a mystic will be very beneficial. Um, so there is a curiosity and amazing expressions with all of these numbers. So ones, the people that are uh, creative and confident, their energy can be unobstructed and it naturally flows into creative, um, into creative places. There's an abundance of energy that gives number ones the ability to generate creative work in anything that they do as long as it carries and holds that same energy. So they are a current on this planet and they do like movement, they like expression, and they like to manifest as uh, a, a channel. And they are a channel of expression and they may delve into many different things, but they also um, are very good at breaking addictions with themselves and other people. Um, so their healing power is really good. Um, number twos, they like cooperation and balance and that's the energy that they have that flows through them. The energy of twos makes these individuals a source of strength. They're supportive and they're cooperative and they like to service and work with other people. Um, they do like their own space, but they also do feel that their work has to do with others. They have to define their limits though and choose it's really important for them to define their limits and also their boundaries and and their level of responsibility otherwise they will over sacrifice so over sacrifice or over helping can be um something that will attract them in their life into a place where they're operating from and it is important for them to understand their boundaries because there is magic in that. And the magic in understanding boundaries is being able to feel what's inside before you hit the boundary. So it's really important that they uh, keep their space and understand their space so that when some of the boundaries are being crossed, they can honor that with their magic and power. So threes, uh, expression and sensitivity. And a lot of the threes people, um, they're meant to be constructive on an emotional level, expressing to people and to the world. Um, they're meant to share their feelings and what their ideas are, um, are coming forward through what they uh, are feeling. They are the most direct out of all of the numbers. They're positive and they're very honest. So they do have the moralities of getting people into an honest state of existence. Um, they also need to find ways to apply their sensitivity and expressive abilities to uplift. And they can be very dangerous when they are working in the negative because they'd be able to tear people down quickly. Um, so their channel does have to do with processing what they're feeling um, and they are true feelers but they're there to help people understand their emotions and to learn how to live life feeling good and actually tapping into that their feelings and their ideas are part of their purpose. So expression, creativity, um, and uplifting other people and doing healing work that will bring people into a higher place of either consciousness or energy, um, that is definitely something that the threes would do. People with the number four, um, their, their life is really a lot about stability and process. 
and they're able to build and create and see what um, needs a stable foundation. So number fours are able to recognize where foundations are and what can be uh, built with it. So they're very magical when it comes to manifestation. And they also are able to be patient as they go through this process. If they know they're in a place of growth or they're starting a path, um, they're amazing co-creators when they're aligned. And so their energy is able to complete goals. Um, so they could really help people when it comes to using their intuition and their abilities to help people create um, uh, paths that will bring them growth and success. And they have ability to balance things. Um, they're very strong and flexible, and they also analyze things with their intuition. And a lot of times, they will also feel like their intuition is part of their mental, logical mind, when really it isn't. It's just quite enhanced. So stability and process for fours, and fours can achieve any goal they want. So they have a world of possibilities and can create pretty much anything. Uh, freedom and discipline is the number fives. And this represents freedom through a wide range of experiences. So people that are number fives will experience a lot more things than those uh, than those in some other numbers, but the experiences is, is what leads them on their path. So they are able to experience everything around them, and sometimes they take on too much, um, and things will get heavy. And that's mainly the sign for those that are uh, a number five, but they're living to set people free. And a lot of that is breaking binds and breaking mentalities and making people change their lives. So there's always a lot of action going on with the number fives. And it's just really important that number fives are able to take their time and also make sure they're focusing on their own things. Um, so they, number fives, are here to achieve experience through discipline and focus. And that's why it's freedom and discipline, because there is discipline in the focus of what people are meant to be experiencing right now. And they can also have a lot of extreme energy, and then they also can also have the peaceful, calm energy. So it's important for number fives to find their freedom in life and decide what it is that brings them that freedom and trusting that those abilities will um, help them uh, create the life of freedom that they're seeking on all levels, mental, physical, and spiritual. Those with the number six, that um, represents vision and acceptance. And the vision is of beauty and purity and high ideals. So, they can, in the negative, be judgmental about themselves or other people or even the world. But it's their purpose that lies in recognizing the higher energies or the perfection that is in everything and everyone and aiming for those energies to become active and aligned by accepting themselves and others and how they are in the present moment. So sixes are people that have amazing ability to recognize what people should be doing and how they should be processing and how they could do it. So they're able to change the path of others and also aim for something that uh, those people may never have even thought possible. So they are manifestors because of their vision and they're able to see the future when they get really aligned with this ability. The more people that they help, the more they will see. So it's important for sixes to accept the people in the situations that are on their current path. The sevens, the sevens are trust and openness. 
And those that are sevens have an incisive mind that can read between lines. So they like to see what's going on and how people act and they love the world. They love the earth. They love the flowers, the wind. They're really connected to nature. And sevens are here to trust the wisdom and to find the love inside of themselves so that they can trust spirit when it comes to them. And they are able to come out of hiding and, and also to share themselves. And so sevens, it's really important for them to trust spirit and to connect with spirit and to help and to allow spirit to help them come out of hiding and to share their uniqueness in the world. They're messengers and that's why they can read between the lines and they also enjoy what's happening and what things and where things could be going with it. So they can understand people and their game plays. They can uh, understand the mentality of people. So getting into knowing what all the astrological influences do, they would be able to pinpoint and understand a lot more as well. So universal energies and that channel of trust is super important. But really, um, those that are in the sevens, it's really important that they learn how to love and honor themselves before a lot of the knowledge and wisdom through others comes um, through their work. So sevens are about trust and openness and finding that wholeness and, and aligning with those natural forces of the universe, the earth, air, sky, the moon, uh, the spirit, the sun, all of it. Eights are abundance and power, and eights love their money, and they love their power, and they understand it, but they don't strive for money or power. They don't strive for control or authority or recognition, and that would be the negatives if they are going into that arena, but their greatest um, attribute is being satisfied in life and to just know that they've mastered themselves in ways where they can uh, honor their power and understand the cycle of money and keeping their life at a stable place. They are um, here to bring in um, mastery to abundance and the power of using their energy and their essence and their gifts for a higher purpose, not all for themselves. So they are conduits of power upon our world and they are manifestors and able to recognize what type of power and control needs to happen to attain something. So those that are eights, they have a great power and in the negatives, they're probably very powerful when they are operating from you know, something that is emotionally bothering them. A lot of eights will also experience trauma in their life, and that is something that gives them the strength to break through. They'll use that trauma as a tool to be able to uh, recognize their boundaries, and that trauma and those boundaries would be the doorway that, you know, puts them into those negative, powerful traits. So, Theirs is about being able to co-create with the universe and help people understand that they can move forward and that there is only, um, there's only room for good. So they are light workers for power, for abundance, and for wholeness. The nines, the nines are integrity and wisdom. And the life purpose of the nines is for uh, seeking that integrity to align their higher principles so that they are inspiring others. But the true power of the nines is by living by example. Um, they have natural charisma and they're usually leaders. They should be leaders in some way in their life. And it's because they're able to help people understand the balance and the wisdom and what happens when there's lackful qualities. So they're able to understand 
the building powers of energy and how to create things and put things together. Um, they also love wisdom. So they're channelers of wisdom and they seek wisdom in others. They understand that each person that crosses their path, there is some kind of wisdom to be said or to be found um, for themselves. And so um, being a mystic and a number nine and learning about the wisdom of things and how they operate within and around people is amazing for the number nines. The zero, the zero represents inner gifts and we all have access to these inner gifts. And a lot of these uh, qualities represent our sensitivity, our strength, how we express and our intuition. But people with a zero in their birth numbers, so all of those with the tens or the twenties or um, the forties, they all have gifts that are potential to manifest qualities in greater abundance. So they are known to be um, manifestors and these people are very strong, they're very magical, they love their individuality, they understand their gifts, and their purpose is to bring their gifts closer to the surface and to use this intensity of energy as part of their primary life purpose. So they are representing, let's say, like the 30 and the 3. They're intensifying the 3 energy of expression and sensitivity. And since that, they are here to do random um, things with encountering problems that um, are all gifts that need to mature. So whenever zeros represent some kind of difficulty or, or not represent, but whenever zeros receive some kind of difficulty in their life, it represents that there is some kind of gift that they need to attain. So it's like leveling up with each one. Um, so zeros are always uh, inner gifts seeking to come out. So none of these birth numbers are, in, are better than others. They just represent their own unique strengths and their own unique hurdles. But we need to take note on of these energies because they are part of our path. So I'm going to go into the positive and negative um, aspects of our primary numbers. So our first one, number one, uh, life uh, people with number one, um, their life purpose, as I said before, has a lot to do with creativity and confidence. And when they're tapped into that energy, they operate in the positive, which represents channels of high energy and inspiration into creativity and service. And they also feel secure with themselves. If they are operating in the negative, then they may feel blocked, stuck, frustrated, they feel inferior, they may feel sick or ill, they're lethargic, insecure, and possibly feeding some type of addiction. Those with number two life purpose of cooperation and balance, when they are in the positive, they have a clear sense of personal boundaries and limits, and they support self and others in equal measures. If they're operating from the negative, they will feel overwhelmed, resistant, and reactive. They start out overly helpful, then they'll suddenly withdraw. Those with the number three represent expression and sensitivity as part of their life purpose. And in the positive, they will engage in heartfelt, uplifting expressions and communicate well with inspiration and sensitivity and joy but if they're in the negative they will feel depressed and disappointed they get overly sensitive and they complain and criticize as well as fill themselves with self-doubt those with a number four their life purpose has a lot to do with stability and process 
And when they're in the positive, they prepare well and they progress step by step. They do patiently follow through and they're active with balancing and using their logic and emotion together. But when they're operating in the negative, they want everything now and they try to skip steps. They could be too ambitious or impatient. They get confused, they lack stability, or they won't follow through. Those with the five energy of freedom and discipline in their life purpose, in the positive, they use multifaceted talented talents in a, pos in a focused way. They apply discipline and they are there to achieve independence. When they operate in the negative, they swing from extreme dependence to independence. They get scattered. They try to do too much and they will start pretending and bluffing. Those that are six, vision and acceptance as part of their life purpose. When they're in the positive, they see the bigger picture. They're forgiving and patient. Um, when things don't work out, they don't fall into a perfectionism. They accept things, they accept people and others. But when they're operating in the negative, they can be hypercritical. They'll judge others and others um, against their perfectionist standards. And they get lost in petty details. They'll get distracted. Those who are seven um, with a life purpose, including trust and openness, in the positive, they are trustful. They trust their feelings. They trust others enough to open their heart. Uh, they'll take emotional risks and they share their feelings. But when they're in the negative, they'll get bitter. They uh, feel like people are betraying them and they get paranoid and they'll use their mind as a shield. Um, so they don't self-trust or trust others. Those who are eight with a life purpose, including abundance and power, they enjoy abundance and influence without any concerns or abuse. They like to share their blessings generously and wisely. And if they are operating in the negative, they're afraid or preoccupied with issues of money, power, control, and recognition. They also will get into self-sabotage habits. Those who are number nine, uh, with the life purpose, including integrity and wisdom. They live in alignment with higher principles. They lead by example. They manifest. Um, they have charisma and wisdom. But if they're operating in the negative, they get lost of their sight of the higher purpose. They feel alone, cut off. They get locked into a state of mind and out of touch with their heart and intuitions. Those with the uh, number zero um, represent inner gifts. And when operating in the positive, they use their gifts of sensitivity and strength and expressiveness and intuition in service of others for higher purpose. But in the negatives, they can be hypersensitive and nervous, stubborn, sarcastic, they will try to cause chaotic expressions. They get confused by their internal feelings or their intuitions. So in the negative, ones make the best addicts, twos make the best codependents, three make the best manic depressives, fours make the best facilitators, Fives make the best dependents. Six makes the best perfectionists. Sevens make the best paranoids. Eight make the best passive as aggressives. And nines make the best fanatics. But in the positive, ones make the best creative artists. Twos make the best diplomats. Threes make the best orators. Fours make the best an analysts. Fives make the best explorers. Six make the best judges. Sevens make the best scholars. 
Eights make the best philanthropists. Uh, nines make the best leaders. So for those working one, it can mature from insecurity and addiction to creativity and confidence. Those working two can mature from codependence and resentment to balance and diplomacy. Those working three can mature from depression and manipulation to expressiveness and intuition. Those working four can mature from instability and indecisiveness to reliability and organization. Those working five can mature from melodrama and dependency to astuteness and self-reliance. Those working six can mature from disappointment and criticism to expansive vision and acceptance. Those working seven can mature from paranoia and isolation to insight and openness. Those working eight can mature from self-deceit and opportunism to productivity and generosity. Those working nine can mature from hypocrisy, hypocrisy, and fanaticism to integrity and wisdom. Those working zero can mature from inner fears and hypersensitivity to attunement and service. <laughs>